I've had this EDF laying around for a while now. I bought it for a different project which ended up getting scrapped and it's just been collecting dust since then. I wanted to get some use out of it again and the clear option was between a boat and a plane. I've tried to make a lot of planes in the past with limited success and as far as boats I've made a functional hydrofoil. Somewhere kind of in the middle of the two is a hydroplane. Basically, a boat that can skip over the surface of the water like when you skip a rock. However, it'd be pretty bad if this thing caught too much air and decided to take flight like an actual plane. With my mind made up, the first free weekend that I had, I got to work. I started out trying to make a sleeve to put the EDF inside of. This particular EDF is 70 millimeters, and remembering from when I used it forever ago, this thing makes a lot of thrust. Now I know EDFs aren't efficient by any means, and a traditional motor and prop would be better, but it does have one big advantage in this case. By having the center of thrust in the middle of this little tube, as opposed to the middle of a big rotating propeller, we can decrease the distance of where it's mounted compared to the center of gravity of the hydroplane. By doing this, we decrease the amount of torque produced from the forward thrust that is trying to rotate the boat over its nose. During the design process, this stood out as a big plus for using the EDF in this application. Annoyingly, for some reason though, the way that the EDF is built, these little tabs on the side which I plan to use to secure it to the EDF sleeve I was making, they aren't perfectly opposite each other on the housing. They're offset by like 2.5 degrees from the horizontal, so I just had to make some minor changes. I then moved on to making the actual hull of the boat. It's made of pink insulation foam just like the hydrofoil project was forever ago. I used a hot wire to cut it out and then sanded it into shape. Working on the hydroplanes themselves now, I designed this thing to have two in the front and one in the middle back. For a rough angle of attack, I went with around 4.5 degrees, just as a guess. I also included these little sharp fins on the front skimmers. After watching videos from other people on YouTube about their own RC hydroplane projects, one of the most consistent issues I saw was that they struggled to steer at all when on plane. I figured if I added these little fins on the front and a sharp and small water rudder on the back that it would help it track straight and turn better. To protect the foam a little bit, I decided to wrap the thing up neatly in packing tape. This would also help the water separate more freely from the whole surface too. I used some general purpose Gorilla Glue to attach the hydroplanes to the chassis and let it dry overnight. The final thing to do before giving this thing its first drive was to glue on the mount which would hold the EVF sleeve as well as the rudder bracket. Real quick, I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. PCBWay is an online PCB manufacturing service that can make your custom parts in a variety of different ways. With PCBWay, you can have your designs 3D printed, CNC machined, metal printed, sheet metal fabricated, and even injection molded to name a few. Across this wide range of services, PCBWay offers really good prices and quick turnaround times. If you're interested to see what PCBWay can do for you and your projects, click the link in the description. Their services support makers like me to create cool projects like this one, and they can do the same thing for you too. Big thanks again to PCBWay. Wow, that was cool. A little while later, once everything was dry and the conditions were right, I took the hydroplane down to a lake. The weather couldn't have been much better than this. The water was dead flat, no wind at all, and the evening sunset made for some really cool video. The boat noticeably functioned great in displacement mode. The air rudder and water rudder made it very easy to steer after trimming the center slightly. Oh my god, that was quick. I also noticed that with very little throttle, probably less than a quarter throttle, the boat was able to leap up onto the hydroplanes. 
Across every time I drove this boat, I don't think I ever gave it over 60% throttle. The CDF was very powerful and probably a little bit overkill for this application, but it was pretty neat to see. So I'm thinking that the reason why it started to kind of crab walk to the side there was because of the, the, of the fins on the front skimmers here. Oh. I'm guessing that somehow this and this brings the center of pressure once it's up on the um, hydroplanes farther forwards than the center of gravity, which is like way back here. So what happens is it kind of skews a little bit and then eventually this thing has enough, um, what's it called? Correcting moment to write it back on course, but not until it's like sideways. So the way to fix that would be either to break these off or make this deeper. Um, I'm not going to do either of those right now. So I'm just going to drive it around a little bit more and fix it another time. You see what I mean, right? Oh shit, zero throttle. Oh. That's quick. Too quick. It's cool, right? That's nice. Wow. That's really cool to see. You saw how it like started to veer to the side and then it like caught and straightened itself out. Those first runs were really amazing. The only things that I wanted to critique was a deeper rudder to fix that crab walking issue and a better electronics cover to replace the duct tape. Also to keep the water rudder more rigid and prevent it from flexing as much at high speeds while cutting through water, I printed it in two pieces and used CA glue to put them together. This rudder sits about 1.5 to 2.5 centimeters deeper than the previous one. I made a slightly better hatch using hot glue and foam board and once again used e-tape to secure it to the deck for a watertight-ish seal. I was pretty eager to go drive this thing again, especially since other stuff had been keeping me busy for a while. I came back on a day that wasn't nearly as pristine as the first day that I took the boat out, and it would end up being a contributing factor to the boat's demise. After taping up the hatch, I put it back in the water to see if my modifications would improve anything. It was really clear to see just how much better this thing handled with the changes to the rudder. It tracked as straight as an arrow while up on plane and steered really well too. 
This is the second time I forgot that the momentum of this thing really doesn't want to let it drop down off of the plane, and accidentally crashed into the shore. Then, sadly, only after a few runs of the boat working so amazingly, I pushed the throttle a little too hard, it accelerated to too fast of a speed, and it became unstable and flipped catastrophically, totaling it. I believe it flipped for a few reasons, the most obvious being the shape of the pink foam hull which forced air under itself and acted like a wing at such high speed. This also wasn't helped by the fact that it was driving into a headwind which was relatively gusty that day, especially for a craft as light and fragile as this hydrofoil. The breeze also introduces little ripples into the surface of the water, causing the front skimmers to bounce back and forth each time they strike one. This could have been avoided if I had done a few things differently, the first being obvious, waiting for a day with no breeze like the first time I took it out. The second would have been to shift the CG around a bit, or maybe put some aero on the front to counteract the lift forces at higher speeds without drastically changing the weight of the vehicle. All that said, what happened happened, and my EDF is now dead. <laughs> Ironic that my idea to integrate it back into a project ended up getting it immediately killed. Oh well, it happens. Anyway, thanks so much for watching, especially if you've made it all the way to the end. Let me know what you might have done differently with this hydroplane, or if you have any suggestions for something you'd like to see in the future. Bye.